Coming up on Fulton Today, voters get a jump on the November general election by casting their ballots this week. And one of Fulton's accountability courts receives national recognition. We'll tell you why. Fulton Today is next. From the Government Center in downtown Atlanta, you're watching Fulton Today with Shania Chavis. Welcome to Fulton Today, everybody. I'm Shawnya Chavis. Voters kick off the November general election season by casting their ballots this week. Early voting has begun, and this year you can even cast your ballot on Saturday and some Sundays. Rick Barron is the Registration and Elections Chief. Sir, welcome back to Fulton Today. Hi, Shawnya. Thanks for having me. So first things first, Rick, let's remind everybody why voting early has become so important to the process. Early voting is important because it allows for convenience to the voters of Fulton County. We have a number of locations around the county. The voters can vote at any of those locations. It's also better for Election Day. It'll reduce the lines on Election Day because the more voters we have that turn out during early voting, the fewer voters we have on Election Day, which makes Election Day run smoother. In addition, when voters go to the polls during early voting and they have an issue, it's easier for us to resolve that. On Election Day, it's, there's much less time, and usually with the, the pressure of the lines, it's harder to resolve an issue on Election Day. And how many days and locations will be available for early voting? We're going to have 19 days of early voting in Fulton County. We will have up to 19 locations. The first week, Monday through Sunday, we're going to have seven locations available for the voters. Weeks two and three, we will have 19 locations open. We'll be open Monday through Sunday, all three weeks of early voting. And I mentioned that there will be Saturday and Sunday voting this year. Do you think that the weekend dates will have some somewhat of a difference with the voter turnout? I'm unsure whether voter turnout will increase because of Saturday and Sunday voting. But what I would like to see is that voters use early voting for their own convenience and to, and to change the habits so that voters will vote early and relieve a lot of the pressure that we have on Election Day. And anything else you'd like to add, sir? We're excited about a campaign that we're going to have. It's called Post the Peach. After you exit the polling location, after you've voted, when you have your, your Georgia I Voted sticker on, it'll take a picture, a selfie, of, and, po and go to hashtag Post the Peach on Twitter and let everybody see that you voted and challenge any of your friends to go out and do the same. All right, Registration and Elections Chief Rick Barron, always great information. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Thanks for having me. Now, you can also look at sample ballots on the Registration and Elections website. Now, once you vote, you can take part in the county's Post a Peach campaign. Take a selfie of your I Voted Peach sticker and post it on the website. Citizens will get their chance to speak out on what services they'd like to see funded next year. FGTV's Priscilla Ortega is in our news center with details on how you can be involved in the process. Shania, every budget season, residents have numerous opportunities to comment on the spending plan. And this year will be no different. Take a look. In addition to residents being able to speak during the public comment portion of the Board of Commissioners meetings, there will also be district public hearings as well. Residents can give their final comments to the Board in January. That's when, by law, the Board has to approve its final spending plan for the year. You can get a complete listing of the budget hearing times and locations on the county's website. Reporting in the News Center, I'm Priscilla Ortega for FGTV. Thank you, Priscilla. Meanwhile, Fulton's first responders are recognized by the Board of Commissioners for one of the most important weeks in their profession. I therefore be resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Fulton County recognizes the great importance of fire prevention, commend the efforts of the Fulton County Fire Rescue Department uh, to educate the public about fire safety and does have hereby proclaim Sunday, October 5th through Saturday, October 11th, 2014 is Fire Prevention Week in Fulton County, Georgia. 
This year's theme of Fire Safety Week is Working Smoke Alarms Save Lives. Deputy Fire Chief Jack Butler joins us now to talk more about Fire Safety Week. Sir, welcome back to Fulton today. Hi, Shania. Thanks for having me. All right, first things first, Jack, let's give you the opportunity to once again pitch the importance of having working smoke detectors. The smoke detector is your first line of defense in case of fire. Uh, one should be placed uh, outside of uh, your li each living space uh, on each floor. Uh, you should change your batteries at least twice a year. Uh, once when you uh, change times, when you spring forward, you change your batteries. When you fall back, you change your batteries. And sir, what about having that escape plan? A home escape plan is very important because in the instance of a fire, uh, there's panic. Uh, when you practice your plan, you develop a plan, you want to have two ways out. The way you normally go in and out can be your first way. The second way should be an emergency uh, escape, uh, either through a window or a secondary door. And it's been getting a little chilly, so some might be thinking about using that fireplace. Any tips? The best thing to do is to get it inspected. Um, there's professionals out there that will come and inspect your fireplaces for um, any cracks in the lining of the chimney that could lead to fires during the uh, winter season. And Chief, what should families with children know about having a fire safety plan? The main thing with young children is, is that, uh, that escape plan. Having that escape plan practice practicing that escape plan with them. Uh, also knowing that young children do not respond to smoke detectors, the sound of smoke detectors, the way we as adults do. Your home, when a child is in their home with their parents, they're the most comfortable that they are anywhere. So they tend not to respond to those sounds. So always practice your escape plan uh, using the smoke alarm sound so that they can get used to waking up to it. Deputy Fire Chief Jack Butler, it's great to see you, sir. Thanks again. Thanks again for having me. Now, if you'd like more information about smoke detectors and fire safety, you can call the fire department at 404-612-5700 or check out their website. A superior court program that helps to keep veterans out of the criminal justice system receives national recognition. The Veterans Accountability Court received the Brain Trust Award from the Congressional Black Caucus in Washington, D.C. The court offers treatment alternatives for veterans who have entered the criminal justice system because of substance abuse, homelessness, and deteriorating mental health. It's open to any veteran, anyone who has ever served in the military, regardless of their discharge status. If they are in Fulton County and in the criminal justice system, we've tried to identify those cases. If they are nonviolent cases and the person is willing, we will work with the prosecutor to defer the charges and instead of a prosecution, have them go through an intensive program at a minimum of, of 18 months to try to deal with their addiction. The Accountability Veterans Court was started last year with the help of a grant from the Substances and Mental Health Services Administration. About 70% of participants in Veterans Court have successfully completed the program. Fulton's Animal Services team is asking the public for help in keeping its shelter from being overcrowded. The county offers a number of programs designed to prepare dogs for adoption. Programs like Charm School, Tales on the Trails, and the Run Club, all designed to help socialize, exercise, and eventually get shelter dogs adopted. There's lots of advantages. Number one being that the dogs get some interaction. The dogs are in their kennels for long periods during the day, so this gives them an opportunity to get out and interact with um, guests who come and visit them. It also gives them a chance to um, learn those manners and learn how to interact, but also helps them actually lower their cortisol levels, their stress levels, and calm down in a shelter environment. If you're looking for a companion or if you even want to volunteer your services, contact Fulton County Animal Services at 404-613-0358. And still to come, Fulton's elected leaders show appreciation to their longest serving colleagues. District by District coverage is next. You're watching Fulton Today. 
the longest serving Fulton commissioner is honored by his colleagues and the county welcomes a delegation from the Ivory Coast. Here's this week's district by district coverage. We begin in District 1 and a visit by an international delegation to Fulton County. Chairman John Eve served as the official host to the delegates from the Ivory Coast during an economic development and education luncheon at the National Center for Civil and Human Rights. The Honorable Prime Minister Daniel Kublan Duncan was the guest of honor along with officials from his republic. Well, I would like to thank uh, Mr. John Eves for his kind invitation to be here in Atlanta. I've been here uh, different times, the purpose to to stress the links between uh, the other states and uh, Cote d'Ivoire, and uh, this time with uh, Fulton County. It was during the, its heyday in the 70s, it was strong in terms of its culture, in terms of its economy, and it's now coming back. And for Fulton County, which is the capital county in the state of Georgia that includes the city of Atlanta, this is a great opportunity for uh, the business sector, the education sector, the healthcare sector, to engage in a meaningful dialogue partnership with this strong country in West Africa. Members of the county's economic development team were a part of the luncheon discussion. The Ivory Coast borders Liberia and Ghana in Africa. District 4 Commissioner Tom Lowe is honored for his four decades of service to Fulton County residents. His board colleagues, along with mayors from the North Fulton City, recognized him during a special reception just before their October regular board meeting. Lowe is the longest serving Fulton commissioner in the history of the board. I've known so many people with the county in 40 years. Kids that have been kids out of college gone to work for Fulton County and retired, and I was here when they came. <laughs> I was here when they finished their 30 years. And it's, uh, I guess, the people more than anything else. Commissioner Lowe was presented with a proclamation by the North Fulton mayors. The commissioner has represented Buckhead, Sandy Springs, and part of Roswell since 1974. In District 5, it's raining pink, all in the name of breast cancer awareness. The Fulton County Health and Wellness Team sponsored the awareness event at the Adamsville Recreation Center. From the free blood pressure checks to the educational forums and testimonies, the day proved to be all about saving lives in the fight against breast cancer. I know for the Darnell facility, we've been coming to this event for at least seven or eight years, and every year it has grown over the years and just gotten better and better. I'm an 18-year breast cancer survivor and thriver, and I love to say, because I have thrived just after breast cancer, and it's just so heartwarming to be amongst uh, women who are just like me and women who we can provide information to. A number of health and community partners teamed up with the county for the awareness event, including Grady and Northside Hospitals, and the Darnell Divas and Dudes and Red Hatters were also featured at the event. And finally, in District 7, members of the Friends of Wolf Creek organization honored Commissioner William Bill Edwards for his many years of service in South Fulton. The group presented him with a cornerstone with his name engraved on it that will be placed on the property of the Wolf Creek Amphitheater. The group wanted there to be a permanent reminder of the commissioner's dedication to the amphitheater. It was important to give back to the community. He has done so much for our community, and it was only fitting that we give him something that was appropriate for what he's done for this community. Well, first, let me first thank my colleagues on the Board of Commissioners, because without them, I couldn't have done this. It would just would have been a vision that would have passed. Secondly, I want to thank the taxpayers of Fulton County because it's their money who created Wolf Creek. And I can tell you that they have continuously enjoyed it year after year after year. The Friends organization made the presentation during the last concert of the year at the venue. And when we come back, the county gets federal funds to help combat chronic diseases. Stay with us.
Fulton's health and wellness team is awarded a nearly $9 million grant. Now the funds will be allocated to help reduce chronic diseases in the county. FGTV's Lynn Vaughn has our story. When Fulton's health professionals applied for a grant from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, they had one mission in mind, to address chronic diseases in the county. And we entitled our program Growing Healthy Fulton because that's what this grant is all about and that's how we're going to spend these dollars. It's about making Fulton County a healthier community through our partnerships and uh, community linkages. Fulton is receiving $8.9 million of the over $50 million awarded by the federal government. The funds are part of the Partnerships to Improve Community Health, or PITCH, initiative. Some of these funds are going out to the community. Community organizations will be able to apply for some of these funds because really health is local. The grant money will be used for programs and coalitions that promote healthy eating, physical activity, a tobacco-free lifestyle, and provide better access to preventative health care. We think there might be opportunities for walking trails and bike trails regarding increased access to physical activity, um, the development of community gardens uh, for the access to healthy fruits and vegetables. So those are some of the programs that I think the community can look forward to. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention will administer the grants in increments of nearly $3 million over a three-year period. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Lynn Vaughn. All right, thank you, Lynn. Meanwhile, this month, health leaders and advocates are shining the light on SIDS, or Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. The CDC says SIDS is the leading cause of infant death among one-month-to-one-year-olds. Health officials say there are several ways to prevent these deaths. When they put the baby to sleep, to have the baby sleeping on their back, um, to remove any sort of big fluffy animals or pillows or anything like that from the crib or sleeping area. And also it's important to put the baby in a, a sleeping space, ba bassinet or crib um, by themselves. The CDC also recommends mothers breastfeed their babies Give the baby a dry pacifier that is not attached to a string for naps and at night, and do not let the baby get too hot while asleep. You can call the Department of Health and Wellness for more information at 404-612-1211. Well, making healthy meals doesn't have to take that much time or cost that much money. Fulton today, County's Cooperative Extension uh, Team teaches the SNAP Education Program. SNAP stands for Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. SNAP education is a course where families learn how to make quick, affordable, and healthy meals. The office's director recently trained employees who will teach the program. Cooperative Extension received a grant um, through the University of Georgia to um, place people um, in the county to learn how to um, stretch their dollars and it also um, was to help the Fulton Fresh Mobile Farmers Market program by um, extending what we teach in that program as well. The goal is to make meals that will appeal to the pickiest of eaters. We made a meal today with the skillet mac and cheese um, which had broccoli in it. Um, that's a way to get children and or other picky eaters to um, get their fruit and vegetable uh, get their vegetables in. We also made a smoothie today um, with yogurt. It had um, strawberries and bananas in. Um, I know a lot of children that don't like bananas, but they're very good for you. Um, and that's a way to get your vegetables in and your fruit in because you can add vegetables and fruit to your smoothie. The program is available to anybody who wants to participate. So here's the contact information. You can call Fulton Cooperative Extension at 404-332-2400. And still to come, wrapping up another successful season at Wolf Creek. Stay with us. You're watching Bolton Today. A one-man show produced by a Tony Award-winning director is making a big hit with audiences. Kenny Leon's new play is called How I Learned What I Learned. During the rehearsal at the Southwest Art Center, 
We watched as the autobiographical one-man reenactment tells the story of August Wilson. The production explores the playwright's struggle as he worked as a black artist in America. And most of the stories center around um, August's youth in the Hill District in Pittsburgh in 1965 when he's a 20-year-old poet trying to figure out how to find a girlfriend, how to get a job to pay his $25 every two week rent. The, the essence of what this play is is storytelling. And you know, and oftentimes that involves one person being many people in, in a lot of ways. And, uh, and, and that I think is what the beauty of this actually turns out to be, in, especially being one, you know, a one man show. The play runs until November 2nd. For more information, you can visit FultonArts.org. And finally, the Wolf Creek Amphitheater team celebrates another successful season of sold-out concerts. The crowds at Wolf Creek were entertained with everything from jazz, blues, and funk. Fans love the free parking and the ability to bring food and drink. Employees and county leaders gathered at the South Fulton Tennis Center to celebrate the successful season. For the 2014 concert season at Wolf Creek Amphitheater, we sold over 2,158,000 tickets in ticket sales. We had over 70,000 patrons to visit Wolf Creek Amphitheater this season. To get up-to-date information on next year's concert schedule, go to wolfcreekamphitheater.com. And before we go, our reminder that we'd like to hear from you about the stories and programs here on FGTV. Email us at fgtv.feedback at fultoncountyga.gov. You can also follow us on twitter.com slash fgtv, find us on Facebook, and watch us on YouTube. Well, that does it for this edition of Fulton Today. I'm Shawnee Chavis. Thank you for joining us. Join us each week for news around and about Fulton County.